Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the incredibly important but often overlooked topic of the shoulder slope. You might be surprised to know that the shoulder slope of your garments has a huge impact on the way they fit you. So let's dive right in. A question a lot of people often ask me is why is the slope of a front pattern more angled than the back shoulder slope? So I want you to go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror and look at your shoulder slopes. Take a photo of yourself even. We're going to come back to that photo in a little bit. Now you might be thinking, well that shoulder slope, we should really have the same angle in the front and the back, right? No, not always. It depends on the shape of the body. So I want you to turn to your profile view and then I want you to look at that shoulder tip. This is what we call the low point shoulder right here. And that bone is actually the collarbone coming all the way out, which you can follow along until you feel a protrusion. Once you feel that protrusion here, you're gonna go all the way to the end of that bone. That's what we call that low point shoulder, LPS. That's the general position of where you would have an armhole seam. It's also the general position of where you would have a shoulder seam coming from the high point shoulder to the low point shoulder. Now you can see on my body that my shoulder blades are protruding out, right? They usually do when we start moving the body. Even when we're standing straight up, you might still have a more rotated forward shoulder. So if your low point shoulder is coming to the front, as you can see mine is, more than likely you might have a difference between the front of the garment and the back of the garment for the slope. So I wanna show you an example of a pattern that I've done some corrections to based on my customized ease amounts. If you're not sure what ease is and customizing your ease amounts, I have many other videos about that topic. You can see here that the front shoulder slope, it's on top of the back pattern here. We can see how different the front is to the back. So we have a pretty big difference between the two slopes. The back is less angled than the front. When you align the pattern on your body, it also gives you another visual for that angle of the shoulder slope. You can see here that that front angle is more angled because the low point shoulder is rotated towards the front of the body. When the back is taped to the front, that back has to go all the way up and wrap around to the front more, which causes a smaller angle on that back shoulder seam. Now we have one more important factor in the shoulder slope and that has to do with the shape of the shoulders. So there are two main driving factors in that shoulder slope. Number one is the angle when you're looking straight on in the mirror. Number two is the profile view. How rotated is that low point shoulder leading to a more forward shoulder? Now, if you have a more upright posture, you're probably going to have a more similar angle between the front and the back pattern pieces. So the shoulder slope can vary a lot from pattern to pattern. We can have anything from 14 degrees all the way up to 30 degrees. It really has a huge range here. So it could mean that you might need a pattern adjustment. I'm gonna go through some of the fitting book visuals in case you have shoulder slope issues these are the main issues that you'll see in your fitting garments i want you to take a look at your photo that you've taken in the mirror straight on we're going to draw your neck and then we're going to draw the shoulder slope so we have something that looks kind of like this now every person will have a different kind of shape here I want you to pay attention if your shape is more straight, if it has a slight concave to it, if it has a more drastic concave to it, or if it even comes up slightly more rounded. Now on your garments, you can see that different shapes would lead to different angles 
based on the neck width. Let's say we have a very wide boat neck here. We have the garment. We can see that if your shoulder is shaped like this, this is a very flat angle. Let's say we have a more narrow neckline. This angle is quite different from the previous angle. So even the shape of the shoulder can play a difference in the angle of the slope. Now, if you tend to be straighter here, it's going to tend to be the same angle regardless of the neck width. But it's something to consider when you're paying attention to your shapes of your pattern, because at some point, you're going to wanna to try to customize those shapes as much as you can. And if you have your pattern piece that is standard shaped like this, but your body is concave shaped like this, you're going to wanna have a slight curve in your pattern. And vice versa, if it comes up, your body is more rounded, you would want a convex curve in your pattern. What do the most common fitting issues look like for shoulder slope adjustments? Well, the symptoms in the garment look like this. Usually if you have kind of a horizontal drag line, that's an indication that that slope is just too angled and we need to make the angle less. So pages 79 and 80 in the fitting book. You can see here, by opening up that shoulder seam, allowing it to rest open, we're going to eliminate that shoulder slope issue. The next shoulder slope issue that's often found in garments is found in the last chapter under diagonal drag lines. And you can see here the diagonal drag line going toward the armhole. That is the most common issue. Most of the time people need a deeper slope, a more angled slope, and we do that by pinning and raising up the shoulder, just like that. So the symptom is a diagonal drag line going toward the armhole, and I explain a lot more about diagonal drag lines in the book in case you're interested. If you agree that the shoulder slope is critical and fitting, I want you to like the video right now. There is a method to define your shoulder slope in an online course that I've made about mastering garment ease. And in that course, I'm going to show you how to measure the body for the degree amount of the shoulder slopes that you have and how to make pattern corrections to that shoulder slope once you defined your standards. If you're interested in finding more about this course, you can watch a free webinar where I talk about mastering garment ease. I would love to see you in the free webinar to learn more about how you can dial in your customized shoulder slope and how to make adjustments before you cut and sew a fitting sample. Sign up through the link in the description below.